Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, and fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? We were born to make manifest of the glory of God that is within us. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. Does that mean anything to you? I don't know. It's written in plain English. What does it mean? That I'm not supposed to be afraid. Afraid of what? Afraid of me. Recognize that the very molecules that make up your body, the atoms that construct the molecules, are traceable to the crucibles that were once the centers of high mass stars, that exploded their chemically enriched guts into the galaxy, enriching pristine gas clouds with the chemistry of life, so that we're all connected to each other biologically, to the earth chemically, and to the rest of the universe atomically. That's kind of cool. That makes me smile. And I actually feel quite large at the end of that. It's not that we are better than the universe, we're part of the universe. We're in the universe and the universe is in us. evidence of what some believe are our true extraterrestrial origins. The Bible answers the riddle of our origin in four simple words. And God created man. Darwin looked at monkeys and saw Michelangelo. But for modern anthropologists to try to put a name and a date to the dawn of humankind, the answer is constantly changing. Fossils discovered recently in Ethiopia put our earliest ancestors at around 4.4 million years but some scientists believe that there is evidence that we are much older than that. On an archaeological dig in Wayaplico, Mexico, Dr. Virginia Steen McIntyre discovered tools that predated the earliest known humans. Her find created a storm of controversy. I don't really want to be in the center of a controversy. I never asked to be in the center of a controversy, but I'm here. And um, doggone it, I, I want to get the information out. I want to get at the truth. I guess that's what it is. Why does Dr. Steen McIntyre feel the need to protect her artifacts from her more mainstream colleagues? Why are contradictory findings being met with contempt instead of excitement? Some researchers charge it's because these new findings would turn modern anthropology on its head. I believe that we came from outer space. All the evidence suggests that human beings, as we know them, did not originate on this planet, but have come to this Earth from other dimensions. I believe that we... I stopped in uh, usually to buy coffee and make a small chit-chat with the uh, young lady who uh, would ring me up. Uh, she was from Ethiopia, and you know, I never really said much, just, you know, how are you doing? It looks like it's going to be a nice day today. But this particular morning I was in there, it was really, really different. And something was telling me, tell her about your sister's experiences of going to, uh, experience of going to Mars and being told that black people dominate that planet. And I said, okay, uh, I don't want to do this. I was like, I don't know her that well. I don't know what she's going to think of me, and, and she's going to think I'm crazy. And I just didn't feel I, I comfortable doing that because she was virtually a stranger with, with the exception of just, you know, making small chit-chat when I saw her each morning. But it was unrelenting. It would not stop. And so I just gave in because the feeling was so 
powerful and so overwhelming and so unrelenting. So I just blurted it all out, and she said, she didn't bat an eye. She said, oh, yes, that's true. It's in our history books back in Ethiopia. Our ancestors came from the planet Mars. As a matter of fact, um, I could have my mother send from my history book back in Ethiopia for you to see. I couldn't read Ethiopian, but I was like, what? I, she had, I had to have her repeat it. I, I was just really, really shocked. I couldn't believe it. But um, she repeated it. I heard it correctly. So a few months passed by. I talked, uh, went to a to a lady who had an African dress shop in uh, an area of Dallas called Winwood Village. And she was older than the first young lady, and this woman, uh, the older woman, was from Nigeria. So I thought, well, let me pose this question to her and, and this scenario, see what kind of feedback she can give me. She's older and elder. She might be able to really enlighten me on this subject, and indeed she did. I told her the same story about my sister's experience of going to Mars and what she was told, and she said, yes, this is true. Our ancestors came from the planet Mars, and they settled in what they call Africa to mine the gold because it was most plentifully found there. But because of the influence of Islam, Islam and Christianity, all that had been suppressed and went underground. She said you could not talk about these things anymore as both of these um, religions emerged on the continent. So she said if you go into some of the um, villages today and talk to some of the elders, you can still see shrines to this very day dedicated to our ancestors from the planet Mars. That's amazing. Oh. George, I tell you, it was so amazing. I felt like Alex Haley. You remember the movie and the book Roots when oh, he goes absolutely. back and traces his ancestry to Africa? But I was now being told of an ancestry that went beyond our planet, that all, all the way reached to another planet. And it was just so phenomenal. And I felt like, you know, this is, I'm, I'm getting a link to a galactic family that we've never had before. And it made me realize how successful um, um, the slave traders had been in cutting off all of our knowledge of our history and our knowledge of ourselves and our religions and our culture and, and everything because all of this she was telling me was what was passed down through oral traditions in Africa. And she said, but if you talk to young people in Africa today, they don't know this. She said, because they are either Muslim or Christian and that is not a part of the origin story. What? He didn't know where Elijah came from because he didn't have a mother or father and didn't want to tell you about man incarnating on the planet Earth. So they said he's a Teshvite. And then they tried to look up this body became a place. They thought about Mel Meli Sadek. They didn't know what he was or where he came from. He said he had neither mother nor father, no beginning of that. We don't know who he is, but he had to be a man. <laughs> you follow that? Because they cannot deal with the fact that we are incarnation. Incarnate means we came from someplace else. The star Cyrus out there that they talk about in the beta star constellation is where we're looking up. The Dogon have endured and preserved mysterious ancient knowledge. Knowledge of an invisible star and its movements through the heavens. One believes the universe was born in a vast explosion and as it opened up, everything that we know about and everything that the Dogon know about in the world came pouring out and nothing was left except a shell. This empty shell became the star that they called the Pontolo and that we call Sirius B. In 1950, astronomers confirmed the existence of the Dogon star. Dogon knowledge of the dark star. The symbols reveal more information about the celestial universe. They correctly place the Earth and our solar system within the Milky Way and state correctly that the massive cluster of stars is far more distant than the planets. The understanding of astronomical movements led the Dogon to investigate the human anatomy. They discovered the circulation of blood in the body long before it was discovered by the English physician William Harvey in the 17th century. These symbols and the knowledge they hold are the legacy of the mysterious pneumos, the messengers from the dark star. But if you merge the energy, you see that the energy is forming a big blue triangle. The triangle is in what sign? Earth sign. Earth. That's interesting because now we're dealing with land. <laughs> that shows you if we just marry the energy. And one thing about the moors and the war is, that's the last time that you went on record at war and actually whooped these Europeans' ass. So you need to 
to understand the cosmic shift that was going on then, and since I just showed you it's the same thing playing out now, you need to learn how to marry that. Therefore, you see this. See, the ancestors gonna speak. They gonna speak through signs and symbols. They gonna show you what you should be doing. All right? Of a black woman that you see on Mars. 